Triassic period. It's 252 million years ago, and the Permian-Triassic extinction event, also called the Great Dying, has just happened, wiping out an estimated 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species. It's thought to have been caused by massive, prolonged volcanic eruptions in the Siberian traps in modern-day Russia. These eruptions released enormous amounts of greenhouse gases that triggered climate change. Around this time, Earth was essentially depleted and had just one single supercontinent, called Pangaea. It was mostly composed of desert with arid conditions, while more coastal regions experienced strong seasonal rains and winds. However, even though the conditions were this harsh, not all forms of life went extinct. Within the small percentage that survived, we can find some resilient plants like these ones, and most importantly, synapsids, the group that includes mammals and their ancient relatives, and archosaurs. Now, what we really care about is the archosaurs. You see, at that time, there were no real dinosaurs in the proper sense of the word, but rather their predecessors. You could have seen creatures like ichthyosaurs, and Proterosuchus. By contrast, mammals still played a marginal role at the time, existing as small and likely nocturnal creatures. The real change, however, happened around 230 million years ago in the southern part of Pangaea, which is now modern-day South America. Here, the first examples of dinosaurs appeared, such as Eoraptor and Hererosaurus. However, they didn't look like how you might imagine them. They were really small. For example, Eoraptor was about 3.3 feet long, much, much smaller than a human. However, this wasn't necessarily a disadvantage. Their small stature made them incredibly agile. This was supported by an impressive evolutionary feat they developed. Their legs were positioned directly beneath their bodies, rather than sprawling outwards like contemporary lizards. This allowed them to stand on two legs, giving them much more speed and stamina, both for running away and for chasing. While dinosaurs weren't very diversified at the beginning, they started to diversify as the Triassic period progressed. Theropods, the group of typically two-legged, meat-eating dinosaurs that would later include some of the giants we'll talk about later, started to appear. Sauropodomorphs, the dinosaurs characterized by long necks and large size also began emerging. A first trend of change occurred when Platyosaurus, a long-necked sauropodomorph from Europe that was 10 meters long, began to thrive. It signaled a broader trend toward increasing size and herbivory in some lineages. However, just as Earth was beginning to repopulate and these new forms of life were developing, a new catastrophic event occurred. Around 201 million years ago, the end Triassic extinction brought an end to all of this. The leading hypothesis attributes this extinction to massive volcanic activity associated with a huge area of volcanic rock that formed as Pangaea began to rift apart. Once again, these eruptions released vast amounts of greenhouse gases, destabilizing the climate. Most life on Earth was wiped out, about 76% of all species, including most large amphibians, the remaining large synapsids, except the lineage leading to mammals, many marine reptiles, and crucially, the large terrestrial archosaur competitors of the dinosaurs, such as the Rawisukians. The main survivors were turtles, crocodilians, early mammals, pterosaurs, and most importantly, dinosaurs. With their main rivals gone, these survivors had a fresh start to take over the world. Jurassic Period Following the end Triassic extinction event, a new period began. It's called the Age of Giants, because this is when we finally witnessed the definitive rise of dinosaurs. The supercontinent Pangaea continued its slow fragmentation, primarily splitting into two major landmasses, Laurasia in the north, comprising future North America and Eurasia, and Gondwana in the south, with the rest of the world. This rifting created new coastlines and shallow inland seas, leading to a generally warmer, wetter, and more stable climate compared to the harsh aridity of the Triassic. In a sort of chain reaction, this caused extensive forests to flourish, which provided abundant food sources crucial for supporting large herbivores. Everything seemed to aid the dinosaurs' growth as the dominant species, and in fact, they rapidly diversified and grew to enormous sizes. Two main groups of dinosaurs started to dominate the landscape. The first was the sauropods, the iconic long-necked four-legged herbivores that descended from the smaller sauropodomorphs of the Triassic, like Platyosaurus. These guys achieved colossal dimensions. For example, Brock Brachiosaurus, which was one of them, had a neck so long that he could look over trees to scout the area. Diplodocus and Apatosaurus, two other iconic dinosaurs, were also sauropods. Their immense size not only served as a defense against predators, but also as a necessity for processing vast quantities of relatively low-nutrition plants in extensive digestive systems. The second major group was the theropods, which came straight from the Triassic period. These guys roamed on two legs and were carnivores, having all the traits of standard predators, sharp and 
and recurved teeth, powerful claws, and agile movement on two legs. One of the most common dinosaurs from this group was Allosaurus, a predator so effective that it's said to have hunted sauropods or stegosaurus. They're usually confused with T-Rexes, but they're not the same. They're just long-distant relatives. Another iconic dinosaur from the theropod group that developed around this time was Ceratosaurus, famous for the horn on its snout. However, not all dinosaurs were necessarily incredibly big. Smaller ones continued to exist, and matter of fact, one of the smallest dinosaurs of all time is found in this era. Compsognathus, a dinosaur that was as big as a chicken and hunted small lizards and insects. As a fun fact, birds originated specifically from the theropod group, with Archaeopteryx possessing feathers alongside reptilian features like teeth and a bony tail. It's important to note, however, that while theropods and sauropods were the two main groups of dinosaurs, there was an important third one, the Ornithischians. These guys, also known as the bird-hipped dinosaurs, were entirely herbivorous and developed interesting strategies for feeding and defense. Stegosaurus, for example, developed a distinctive double row of plates along its back, likely for display or thermoregulation, and a spiked tail to defend itself from predators. The first examples of armored dinosaurs were also part of the Ornithischians group, like the earliest ancestors of the later Ankylosaurs, which had bony plates for protection. Around this time, the seas were dominated by plesiosaurs and pliosaurs, while the skies were ruled by pterosaurs, which diversified greatly, ranging from the long-tailed Ramphorhynchus to the short-tailed Pterodactylus. Mammals, on the other hand, remained marginal just like in the Triassic period, being mostly nocturnal and insectivorous. However, around 145 million years ago, another significant ecological transition occurred. This wasn't as brutal as the previous mass extinction events, but it did bring about substantial change, likely due to rising sea levels, environmental shifts, climate fluctuations, and the continued drifting apart of Pangaea, the world transformed. Many iconic Jurassic dinosaur groups, like stegosaurs and certain large sauropod lineages, declined or went extinct. This marked the beginning of a new era, Cretaceous period. This is probably the most interesting period for dinosaurs. Not only did diversity reach its peak, but it's also when the most famous and iconic species appeared. During the Cretaceous period, continental drift continued, and the supercontinents Laurasia and Gondwana fragmented further, moving toward the modern arrangement of continents. This separation created vast new coastlines, and global sea levels were incredibly high, contributing to a generally warm, greenhouse climate worldwide. This brought about another important change, the spread and diversification of flowering plants. Because of of this, new insects, like bees and butterflies, began to appear. As for theropods, Tyrannosaurus rex, with its massive skull and powerful bite, dominated late Cretaceous North America, while other large carnivores like Carnotaurus, known for its horns, and Spinosaurus, a massive semi-aquatic predator, thrived elsewhere. Smaller, feathered theropods related to birds, such as Velociraptor and Trudontids, also became quite important. While older sauropods, like Brachiosaurus, declined and disappeared, a new group became important within the sauropod family, the titanosaurs. They were called this because they were enormous, with species like Argentinosaurus and Patagotitan reaching lengths over 98 feet and weights possibly exceeding 154,000 pounds, making them the largest land animals ever known. Ornithischians, however, were the most diverse group of all during this period. Dinosaurs like Edmontosaurus and Parasaurolophus, which belonged to a subgroup called duck-billed dinosaurs, became common and showed signs of complex social behaviors such as herding and nesting colonies. The horn Horned dinosaurs called Ceratopsians, like the famous Triceratops, flourished in North America and Asia. Also, boneheaded dinosaurs like Pachycephalosaurus, characterized by their thickened skull domes possibly used in headbutting contests, began to thrive. Unfortunately, Ichthyosaurs, which we mentioned previously in the Triassic period, declined and disappeared early in the Cretaceous. However, Plesiosaurs continued, alongside the rise of Mosasaurs, enormous marine lizards related to modern monitor lizards, which became apex predators in many marine environments. In the skies, pterosaurs persisted, producing gigantic forms like Quetzalcoatlus, with wingspans rivaling small aircraft. Mammals, on the other hand, while still playing a marginal role, began diversifying, with some becoming herbivores or small carnivores. It was around this time that the ancestors of modern placental, marsupial, and monotreme mammals emerged. This incredibly diverse ecosystem, however, was brought to an abrupt end 66 million years ago with the Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event, a large asteroid or comet approximately 
approximately 10 kilometers wide, struck the Yucatan Peninsula, creating the Chicxulub Crater. This impact triggered catastrophic environmental consequences, including widespread wildfires, tsunamis, and the ejection of massive amounts of dust and aerosols into the atmosphere. This blocked sunlight and caused a prolonged winter, leading to the collapse of global food chains. The event resulted in the extinction of roughly 75% of all species on Earth, including all non-bird dinosaurs, pterosaurs, mosasaurs, and plesiosaurs. However, survivors included birds, mammals, crocodilians, turtles, lizards, snakes, amphibians, fish, insects, and flowering plants. This set the stage for the subsequent Cenozoic era, known as the Age of Mammals. But that's a topic for another video. If you liked this video, subscribe for similar ones or join my Discord to suggest another.